You even come in here and you hear a pastor or someone speak, he's speaking to you. Right now, I don't know what's going on in your life. I know it's the middle of the week. They call it the hump day. I know it's the middle of the week and I know you already had your Monday, you already had your Tuesday, and you're already looking for your weekend because you're tired or whatever it may be. Life comes and it hits you. But the Lord knows what you have need of. Today. That's right. He knows. Like, I don't, you know, I can seek him and, and, and he can give me a word, but he knows. You know what you have need of tonight. You know what's on your heart. You know what's heavy. You know what it is that you need to center yourself up again with him. Yes. Center yourself up again. Pastor Matt didn't know what I was talking about, but when he said things come, and it gets our mind and our focus off of him and we start to get wobbly. Yeah. And it was a couple of questions that the Lord wanted me to ask you tonight and ask myself, but one statement in the title was, it's, it's not worth it. Whatever you're going through, it's not worth it that you take your focus off of God and put it on that problem. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And the Lord is saying tonight, he's saying, where are you? Where are you? Come back and center yourself. Line yourself up with me again. Come back and line yourself up with me again and center yourself with me. And the question is, where are you? And the answer is, you know where you're at. I know where I'm at. I know what I'm going through. But the awesomeness about it is that he meets us where we're at. Amen. And he says, come. Amen. And he says, come. And he's saying, come tonight. Thank you. So Jesus, be the center, Lord, of this service. God, I just I know you're already you're already working, God. I know you're already moving. I know you're already healing. You're already dealing with our hearts, God. That's why we come here to this place. We don't come here to play church. We don't come here just to fellowship, God. We come here to meet with you, Father. We come here to meet with you, God, so you can change us, so you can help us, Lord. God, so we just ask that you would have your way in this service, Lord. Even now, have an altar call experience now in our hearts. Yes. Before the word even comes forth, God, you, God, we already come to the altar with our hearts, Lord. We already come before you, Lord, and we're saying, God, help me recenter you yes. as the center yes. of my life yes. again. Help me look yes. back to the yes. sacrifice. Yes. Help me look back to the blood again, yes. Jesus. Yes. Before we even receive your word, you're doing it. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. you're doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. Thank Praise you, God. Uh, I guess they don't use mics. So I'm going to try not to use a mic. <laughs> I'm so used to using a mic from worship. This is different. This is, uh, you know, I'm so used to coming to you guys and doing worship and I can hide behind my piano. <laughs> this is different, different uh, situation to look at you guys. And I can close my eyes and just go in. <laughs> but to actually look and speak, this is something else. But um, I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you, Pastor Matt, Absolutely. for letting me um, come and just share what the Lord put on my heart this morning. And I believe the Lord does have a word for us. And I say for us because yeah. I'm speaking to myself. You know, I'm not speaking down at you guys. I'm speaking to us as a whole, as a body. You Amen. know, and he said when one part hurts, you know, when I stub my toe, every, every part of my body is feeling it. I'm yes. hopping and everything else, I'm feeling it. You know, it's not just my foot that's feeling it, but the whole part of me. And we're one. And I believe, you know, what he's doing in one, sometimes it might not be with the other, but maybe you'll be there one day. You might not be there today, but maybe one day. So uh, if you would just turn with me in your Bibles in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. And um, like I said earlier, the title that I believe the Lord gave to me is, uh, it's not worth it. That's kind of funny. It's like I should be saying the opposite, right? It's, But it's called, it's not worth it. And if you could turn with me to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 2. And it says, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not, you shall, you shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6, and it says, and when the woman saw the tree was good of fruit, 
and that it was uh, pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit, therefore, and did eat, and gave uh, also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse 9, I'm jumping down to verse 9, and it says, And the Lord God called unto Abraham, I mean, sorry, unto Adam, and said unto him, Where are you? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? All right, and then if you would turn with me to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25, starting on verse 23. I'm going to kind of be going back and forth between these stories. Uh, the one with Eve and her eating of the fruit, and then the story of Esau and Jacob when he sells the birthright to him. So Genesis chapter 25, verses 23. And the Lord said unto her, said unto her Two nations are in your womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy, I don't know that word, bowels. bowels, there we go. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And jump down to verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Verse 26, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's hill. And his name was called Jacob. All right. And then let's jump down to verse 30. And Esau said unto Jacob, feed me, I pray you, with some red porridge, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day your birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point of death. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And, and he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And I know that's crazy because it's like, what do these two stories have in common? Well, the one thing that the Lord brought out to me and the, that these stories have in common is that the lies that are in it. First with Eve, number one, she, uh, you know, something that is uh, crazy is that the serpent spoke to Eve. And uh, it's, it's, it's crazy because she didn't freak out. It was like a normal thing. It was a normal thing for the serpent to talk to her. But if for me, if, a, if an animal started talking to me, I'd be like, oh my gosh, you can speak. Like, I would be thinking I'm Dr. Doolittle or something, you know. But uh, the serpent spoke to her, and she wasn't surprised. And that lets me know that they have had conversations before. This wasn't a new thing that the serpent was speaking. And um, so many times in our life, you know, we could be Eve, and we could be going through our lives, and... Uh, we would have an encounter with our trials, our flesh, or Satan, or temptation, and it won't be the first time. You're not going to give in usually the first time. You know, it's after that thing has been saying, you know what, you should really go back and do that. You should really go and do this. And you know in your spirit you shouldn't do it, and you know in your heart you don't desire to do it, but it's nagging you, and the temptation's there. So, and we're not surprised that, you know, it's, it, might be a, it might be a surprise to someone else what I'm struggling with. It might be a surprise to them, but to me, I know my weakness. I don't know what Sabrina struggles with. I don't know what Angie struggles with. And But their struggle is not a surprise to them. This is something that they've uh, lived That's with. This good. is something that I've lived with. This is something I struggle with. And it doesn't, it's just not a one-time thing and we give in. So she wasn't surprised. So who knows the conversations that the Satan, that the serpent was having with her before. But the thing that is, that is, uh, that is amazing here is, is that she says the Lord tells us not to eat of the fruit, but also not to touch it. God never told her not to touch it. The Lord never said, hey, don't touch this fruit. He didn't say go look at it. He said don't eat of it. But so many times in our Christian walk when we're struggling with something, we add an extra law to it that we think will keep us from going forth and doing it. We add an extra, um, so, you know, maybe I'm struggling with something, so I'm going to say, well, I'm going to pray about this thing ten times today. And therefore, I'll give victory over it. And I won't go and do whatever it is that I know I shouldn't be doing. So the thing is, though, there was a truth mixed with a lie. And so many times we want to take the truth, the word of God, and we like to mix a lie in it. But uh, 
a negative and a positive only produces negative. And I was looking it up and I was like, man, it made me go back to math. Like when I was in algebra one, you guys are doing that, right? So if I said a uh, positive plus a positive, what does that equal? A positive, right? And if I said a negative plus a negative, what does that equal? Positive. Right, so you're always gonna get if it's the same. So it says, it says two um, like signs become a positive sign, but two unlike signs become a negative sign. So Eve was had the truth here but yet she was mixing a, a false and, and it and doesn't produce a positive. And um, Satan came to her and he said, listen, surely you're not going to die. All right? You're not going to die. And what the Lord is saying to you is not real. And if you eat of it, you're not going to die. The Lord just didn't want you to know. And he didn't want you to see. And he didn't want you to be like God. Mm-hmm. And so many times that, the, that is the temptation to ourselves when we're struggling, whatever we're struggling with. The enemy will come and say, hey, you know what, Naya? This thing is really not going to bring harm to you. Mm-hmm. It's really not as bad as you think it is. And then we'll, we'll mix the truth in with the lie. We'll say, well, if you do it on Saturday, you can go and repent for it on Sunday. Help us. And that's and that's true. You can. I can. I can come in on Wednesday. I can go even after I fall in my struggle. I can even go before I go to sleep. Lord, forgive me. Hallelujah. His grace is efficient, right? But when I mix it, start to mix it in with the lies it's not positive That's anymore. Right. Yeah. It's not producing forth life anymore. Therefore, it's only producing negative, and that is death towards me. So she decided to listen to Satan, and she decided to listen to her own self. Look, this is, I bet you this was conversations they had before. This wasn't a new thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't a new thing. When we're struggling with something, it takes, that thing plays in our head a couple yes. of times. You know what I mean? That, that thing plays over and over. Oh, that temptation plays over and over a couple of times in our lives and our mind. But she chose to mix truth with a lie. And Satan said to her, surely you won't die. And, um, and then it goes to, and she said, the woman then began to look at the tree. And she seen that it was good and it was pleasant to the eyes. See, before she wasn't looking at the tree. Before, she was looking at all the rest of the stuff that she could eat in the, the garden. See, if you take me to a buffet and you're like, nah, don't eat that rice, but you can have everything else in this buffet and it's for free. I'm going to be excited and I'm just going to go for everything else. And I'm not going to go for the rice because I'm going to be like, oh, I got all this. I got chicken. I got buff. You know what I mean? I got all this stuff. And so before, she never desired the rice, so to say. She only desired all that the Lord had before her. She was excited about her blessings. She was excited about what God made available. But then when Satan came into the picture and started to speak, then she looked at it. And then guess what? Her appetite changed. Mm. Her desire changed. It was now I desire this tree because now I'm looking at it. Now I want it. It switched. And so many times, you know, uh, it's like you can eat steak and you can grow up in steak. I mean, I use a lot of things in food because I love food. That's, that's like one of my passions. I do. I enjoy food. Um, so I use that example a lot <laughs> growing up. So, but you can tell me about a, a steak, this wonderful steak, right? And you've eaten a steak all day long. But if I tell you about a burger off of the dollar menu at McDonald's and I tell you how amazing it is and it's so good and I paint this beautiful picture and if you never had that cheap meat from McDonald's you might be like man that looks good and I'm telling you look it's got bread it's got pickles it's got ketchup like it's everything all in one and all you're doing is eating this steak over here you're gonna want my dollar menu burger your appetite begins to change because now the enemy is speaking to you and now you're desiring it so I asked, and, I, and the question I was like, man, Lord, let me only listen to your voice, God, yes. because then that's when I can hear your truth. Yes. And I will desire the things of the Lord. Yeah. I can hear your truth and I can desire to, the things that you have for me. All And, you know, the scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah, Jesus. We came to the Lord because we got tired of what the world was feeding yes. us. We came to him because we were yeah. sick and tired of the filth. You know, it said the prodigal son was eating with the pigs, the slop with the pigs. We got tired of eating with the pigs. Yeah. And we started to hear about 
a master, Jesus, right. having something else for us to yes. eat, saying, come to the table and I will feed you. Right. Okay. And I will place, a, I will place a, a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Yes. And our appetite started to change. Thank right. You know, right. we were like, oh, well, let me go here and eat with him. Yes. And we tasted and we seen that the Lord was Amen. good. Yes. Every single one of us in this house, we've tasted and we've seen that the Lord was good. And Eve, she tasted and she seen that the Lord was good. Right. But sometimes in our walk with the Lord, we can get tired of eating the manna. Mm -hmm. We can get tired of eating what God says is good. And we start to hear things in our voices or, or even in ourselves. We start to speak things and we start to listen to the lies. And it changes our appetite and it makes Help us desire things that aren't good for us. Help us. But they look good. They look good and it sounds good, but we forget, don't forget, we've already ate it before. It's just a different picture now. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We already were doing it before, now it's just coming in a different light. Yes. So remember, and we've tasted and we've seen that the Lord was good. And I love the Lord. You know, because even after she ate it and she gave it to her husband, even then, and her eyes were open and then they were afraid and they were running around and they were clothing themselves and it was just a disaster and they were hiding in the garden from the presence of the Lord. He didn't come in angry. He didn't come in mad. He just came in walking. Thank you. You know, and I, it's like me, like when a, if a, a growing up, if a kid was doing something they didn't have a business doing or whatever, and you know, the mom kind of just creeps up on him like, what you doing over there? And they're like, oh, snap, look, you caught me. You know what I mean? It's like, what you doing? I see you. And the Lord walks there in the garden and, he, and he's looking for them. And he says, he says in verse nine, he says, and the Lord God called unto um, Adam and said unto him, where are you? And that's so simple. The Lord says to us simply, he doesn't come. He doesn't say, I told you not to eat them cookies. I told you not to make that mess. I told you not to do that. Come on, we already know we did what we shouldn't have did. We already know Amen. what we fell into. Amen. Right. Amen. Because they experienced the nakedness. It was, they experienced, it was exposed. Yes. Our hearts become exposed. Like, man, I'm still dealing with that. I'm still struggling with that, Lord. And this is still an ugly situation. And we try to cover it with the leaves, so to say. Yeah. But the Lord is so patient. He walks in. He says, where are you? That's such a loving father. Where are you? And it was a place of not like, how dare you mess up? But it was like, where are you? Come back to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like a come back to me. Where are you? But come back to me. And it was, it was a compassionate call. It was a compassionate question. He already knew the answer, but he wanted them to stop for a moment and to examine themselves and say, wow, where, how did I end up here? How did I find myself in this spot? You know what I mean? How did I find myself where I was walking with the Lord in the cool of the day in the garden and eating everything and having plenty to this and now hiding from him? So where are you? And I believe the Lord's saying that. Where are you? And so many times we mix the, the lies in with the truth and it only brings forth death and it only brings us to a place of emptiness. It brings us to a place of shame. To the place where we're hiding from our maker. So where are you? The Lord said to them. And you know, this could be a heavy word, but it's not. It's just reality that we're human, that we fall short. You know, they, they fell short and they, they were in the garden walking with God. Like, you know, but we had a sin nature, right? And sometimes we find ourselves going back to the way is going back to where the Lord has brought us from. And um, we can rejoice that the Lord sees us and he still loves us. Right. That's what we can get excited about. See, it's not about a perfect messenger. It's not about you being perfect, but it's about a perfect creator. And it's about a perfect message Hallelujah. that he wants to give to us. And, and what he's trying to present is he's saying, I still love you. Where are you? Come back. Thank you, Jesus. And, and not only that, he doesn't leave them there. He, closed, he, 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 he um, causes them to have a sacrifice and he closes them in his righteousness. Yeah. And that's the kind of God we serve. Yeah. You know, it's okay. We used to have a class that used to call it the issues of the heart. Oh, my gosh. Um, this was in New Jersey. 
and we would be in there for hours. Oh my God. And this is to show you how uh, law we were. We called it the issues of the heart, and you had to come in there with your paper, and we would pick a character from the Bible, and we would have to pick it apart and find out how it represented us in like in all the issues, like whether it was pride, what is it? We envy, envy jealousy. jealousy. I mean, all of it. The murder spirit, like all. It's where's that at? Is in Deuteronomy, right? Mark. Mark, and it tells you all these things, right, in the heart and how wicked we are. And I used to sit up in that class, and I used to be like, oh, my gosh, because I'd be like, I know I'm wicked. I know I'm evil. Tell me something I don't know. Like, hello, we could talk about how wicked I am all day, and I can, we can put all of it out there. But at the end of it, where, do, where are you telling my hope lies? Like, where is there the hope? Where is there? How are you going to tell me? What? Okay, I know. I got issues. <laughs> right? Come on. I mean, I don't know your issues or what whatnot, but I don't know what you went and picked off the tree for you. I know what I picked off the tree for me that I thought was desirable. But I don't know what caught your eye. But even in the midst of that, the Lord doesn't dwell on that. So don't dwell on that. Don't stay there. Yes. Don't stay there. You know, go for it. Yes. He's saying, where are you? Now come to me. Yes. Don't stay there. Don't live there. Yes. And that lie. See, the enemy will come to you and add another lie on top of it. And he'll just keep adding more. Like, you want some yes. seconds? You want some thirds? No, I don't want any more of that. Get rid of it. Yes. And go back to the master and eat from his hand. Like, go, like he wants to feed you. He wants to give you, Thank you Jesus. the bread of life. Yes. Yes. He, wants to, he wants to feed us. Don't stay there. And the reason why I picked the other story is because, once again, there were some lies here. Um, it talks about the two brothers and um, how it was two nations and how uh, one would be stronger than the other and the younger, the older would serve the younger. And it, in, in there, they're talking about Jacob was going to be stronger than Esau, but yet Esau was going to serve Jacob. And it's, it's basically talking about, uh, well, here, I'll, I'm going to just read what Swagger says. I thought it was excellent. Um, for verse 20, uh, chapter 25, verse 23, it says, The divine nature will be victorious over the sin nature. Man, that's awesome. Hallelujah, that's awesome. Hallelujah. The divine nature will be victorious over the sin nature. See, the Lord already told their mom from the beginning what their life and how it was going to be. He already spoke truth, and he said there was going to be two nations, and he said, but one will be stronger than any other, and that's Jacob. Jacob represents the new man, yes. right? It represents us in Christ, the new man. He said that Jacob will be stronger than the other people. Yes. That's amazing, right? So, but sometimes in our struggle... I don't feel like my uh, new man is strong. I don't feel like my new man's winning. A lot of times I feel like, man, I'm just getting raked across the coals here, so to say. Mm -hmm. And I, my flesh is winning constantly. And I'm not seeing victory and I'm not seeing overcome. But I have to go back to the truth yeah. of God's word. And right. he said right. that yeah. the, there will be a people stronger than the other. So mm -hmm. Jacob will be stronger yes. than Esau. Yes. By the grace of God, you will overcome that thing it is that is trying to take you down. Oh, thank you, Jesus. By the grace of God, by the power of the Lord, hallelujah. And we have to go back to the truth. Yes. Yes. Go Lord. back to the truth. But see, uh, and then it says that the, the, the older will serve the younger. See, and it's not because of anything that we've done. Right. It's only because of what right. he's done. You know, when we first came to the Lord, and I started to learn this when I uh, came to the Bible college, that... The same way we get into Christ is the same way we stay in. And it was by grace, and that's the same way we're going to stay in by grace. But another way, when we came into Christ, it wasn't just that it was grace, but it was also us coming to an understanding that we were weak. Yes. That's right. See, you have to keep that understanding, too. Like, you can't leave that and go away from it and think, now that I'm a Christian, I'm strong, and I can do this now. You know what I mean? You can't. You can't leave that. We have to stay in a place of this is by grace, but also stay in a place this is that I am weak and he is strong. Yes. Amen. I'm not able, but God is able. When we came to him, we were weak. We were beaten down. We were just distraught. And we were, we were tired of eating what the world was giving us. And we came to him weak. And he, and he came and he picked us up and he made us strong. Yes. yes. 
If you were having a bad day, sometimes you come to church and it's like, I don't want to raise my hand. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, pray in tongues. I don't want to, Lord, I'm just tired. I'm just weak. And that's okay. Amen. Really, it is okay. Amen. The fact that you showed up, the fact that you came yes, here, you Lord. knew Amen. where your help came from. Yes. And, and he's that's like, I'm going to refresh you. Yes. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. Amen. I'm going to refresh you because my strength and your weakness his strength is made perfect. Yes. Right? When I'm weak, he's strong. Yeah. And so the same way we came to the Lord being weak, when we first got saved, listen, you can come to him every day week. You can come to him every day week. Man, because I'm telling you that that old nature is no joke and it's nothing that we can accomplish in ourselves. But we rely on the grace of God and his strength only yeah. to get us victory. Thank you, Lord. But Jacob... Jacob represented the, the new, you know, the new man, so to say, or us in Christ. But Jacob, he wanted to make things happen in his own strength. You know, even before he was out the womb, he was like, man, I'm going to be the I'm going to be the first one out. He was pulling on his brother's foot, trying to get him back in there. Can you imagine? Oh my God. Right? You know, and they say, like, you put two kids in the crib and you put the little duck toy in there and you'll see what's going to happen. You know, but from the womb, he was pulling them. Saying, no, I'm going to be the boss. I'm going to get mine. And that's the mentality of the world, right? It's a doggy dog world. I'm going to get you before you get me, and I'm going to get mine. And if I step on you to get what I have to get, oh, well. But we don't have to do that in Christ. That's right. Amen. Amen. He provides. He makes a way for us. He, he's divine. He's, he sees everything that we have need of. Right. And he makes a way. And Jacob didn't have to do it the way he did it. And I'm telling you tonight, we don't have to go to get our blessing the way that sometimes we think that we have to. Scheming, trying to figure it out, stressing out, trying to carry it, trying to figure out how I'm going to get what, what I believe is mine, how I'm going to overcome, how am I going to put Esau to death? How am I going to win this victory? And Jacob grabbed a hold of his foot and he tried to pull him back in. And that's just a type of the church trying to do it in our own strength and in our own flesh. I know this is simple truths, that but yet good. it's good. it's it's life because it's an everyday living. Right. right. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just it's like we're just simply living every day. That's right. And so Esau says to Jacob, "Feed me, I pray you, with some red porridge, for I am faint." Therefore, was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, "And Jacob said, sell me this day your birthright." And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to death. What profit shall this birthright do me? <coughs> Once again, there was a lie because Jacob came in and said, Listen, sell me your birthright and I'll give you some soup. Basically, he was saying this soup is just as worth as your birthright. And that's a lie. That's a lie. What God has for us. Is more than just a bowl of soup. That's right. Amen. And a bowl of soup represents a temporal thing that satisfies you for a moment. Mm. Right. And I love soup, man. When I'm sick, <laughs> you no, know, for real. I like what's that soup we go and we get the uh, the best. Yeah, the best. And it's so thick and warm when they bring it out, and when it's cold in there, I'm like, oh, this is. And it makes you warm. And when you're sick, soup fills up your belly and it gives you that warm feeling, that cozy oh. feeling. Right? But it's a temporal thing. That's right. It's a temporal thing. It only lasts for a moment. That's right. It's not worth my birth, right? It's not worth what God asked me. I don't know what your bowl of soup is tonight. Come on. I don't know what's in your bowl. I know what's in my bowl. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit saying tonight, it's not worth it. Right. What I have for you is so much better than that bowl of soup. What I have for you is so much better than what the world says is good for you. You making a decision to be honest at work is so much better than you not making that decision on, to be honest. That's right. That's right. You making that decision to follow the rest of the crowd at school when they're cutting up and they're making fun of someone or they're disrespecting the teacher is so much better to stand and separate yourself and that's be right. like Christ that's called right. you to be. It's not worth it. That one moment of satisfaction, that one second of that temporal, it's, it's, just, it's a moment of pleasure that comes and goes. Yeah, that's right. But at the time, 
right? The enemy would come in and lie to you and say, hey, Naya, this is so much better if you go this way and not God's way. I'm telling you, he just doesn't want you to be like God. I'm telling you, he just doesn't want your eyes to be open. I'm telling you, he just, he doesn't want good for you. And that's the, what the enemy told uh, to Eve. He said, no, the Lord, he's withholding something good for you. I'm telling you, it's better. Look at it and desire it. Look at it and change your appetite to want it more than what, more than wanting the things of God. It's not worth it. I don't know what's in your bowl, but it's not worth it. Yes, Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to change your appetite. Yes. Lord, change. Lord, you see, I want this. Lord, you see, I desire this thing. Lord, come and change me, Lord. Right. Change my desire. Change my direction, Lord, yes. to want and hunger after the things yes. of you. To want and hum hunger after the things of righteousness right. for your namesake, yes. Lord. Change my desire. Change my appetite, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So the, Jacob plant the lie to even tell him that this this is out of value. Uh, what's the word? Value? Uh, what value. Value. Yes, value that the bowl of soup was just as high as his birthright. That's crazy, man. And you know what? At first, I started to feel bad for uh, Esau. I was like, man, why did Esau get the bad end of the stick? Man, I was feeling bad for him. I'm a first. Well, well, I'm I'm a firstborn, so, so to say, because I'm the oldest one that was adopted. And to get my parents' last name, I have an older brother that didn't get adopted, but I'm considered the first one. My, my dad calls me his number one son <laughs> uh, growing up because I loved just being with my dad all the time. And anything he was working on, I would just want to be there and I just wanted to help him. I'd like cut the grass or whatever. To show you how much I just love helping my dad, when I was 16, most girls get like these beautiful dresses and stuff. I got a weed whacker for my 16th birthday. That's just to show you how much I just love being with my dad. I was so happy. I got my weed whacker. I was out there cutting it all up because I wanted to make him so proud. You know, it was just my desire. But I was the number one. So I was, I get basically, you know, an inheritance. And I never had that before. You know, what, what is that? When I, before I was adopted, I didn't know anything about that. What does that even mean? Didn't even know my biological father. So I had no idea what a first, being the firstborn meant. You know, the blessings that were in store. It was like a double portion of your father's riches. It was a, it was a double dose of blessings. Right. It was a good thing you were respected. In my house, man, I was respected. If I said anything, right? Well, what, uh, you got your older daughter, but dude, if you speak and you tell them boys something, they better do it, right? They're going to get it. You know what I mean? So when you spoke, there was an authority. You know, there was a respect because if the parents yes. weren't around, you yes. were in charge. Right. And if my parents came home and I told them that somebody wasn't listening, they was getting it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I was starting to feel bad for Esau. I'm like, man, they took all, they took his birthright and they took his blessings. Poor Esau. King, and I'm like getting in my feelings. I'm like, man, if like one of my brothers and sisters took my blessings, I would be mad if I didn't get what my dad said was my, mine. I would be, I would be mad. So for him to come to a place to say it's worth a bowl of soup, man, nothing that my dad has for me at the end is going to be worth a bowl of soup. Amen. Nothing, and nothing that God has for you. Amen. Nothing. I mean, He has so much for us. To a place of a firstborn, like, I mean, he's just going to lavish it on yes. you, man. Yes. He's going to lavish his blessings on you. And it's not worth what the world would say it's worth. Because they have no regard for your father and what he has for you. They don't know the love that your father has for you. No one's going to care about the love that the, my dad has for me. It's between me and, me and my father. So I have to cherish that love and that relationship between me and my father. Because I can't expect someone else to cherish it if they don't have it. Yes. And the world's not going to cherish your love with God. That's right. They're not going to care two cents about it. They don't care anything right. about it. They don't care if you tell them, listen, man, God told me if I do this and I go this way, he's going to bless me. And oh, man, yeehaw, I'm excited. They're not going to care. They're not going to understand it. That's right. The world doesn't understand not to go out and do that. The world doesn't understand not to go out and sleep around. The world doesn't understand not to go out and gamble. The world doesn't understand not to go out and lie your taxes or whatever. Whatever it may be, they don't understand it. They have no understanding of it. That's right. Amen. To them, it's worth a bowl of soup. Yes. But you're, the ways that the Lord is calling us to go, we understand it because it's by the Spirit. Yes. Right. Amen. 
and, 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 and the flesh will come in and say, but everybody else is going this way. Everybody else is doing it that way. So he sold him the bowl of soup. And I, you know, the crazy thing is this. We're so dramatic. We're dramatic people. Esau said, behold, he said, I'm at the point of death. Like, I'm going to die if I don't get this bowl of soup. Really? You're going to die? Really? Did you not eat this morning? Like, come on, buddy. You're going to die? But sometimes in our struggle, we're like, if I don't give in to this, I'm going to die. I got to have it. I got to have that hit one more time. I got to go and... I got to go and give in to this one more time. If I don't do it, I'm, I'm just going to die. What a lie. That's right. What a lie. It's a lie because he wants to rob you Amen. of so much more. So much more that God has for you. So much more that he has for you. He said, but if I don't have this, man, I'm going to die. What profit is it going to? It's not going to profit me. Let me tell you something. It's going to profit you so much more than you can ever know. Amen. So much more if you say, you know what? It's not worth it. What God has for me is so much more. It's going to profit you beyond you can ever dream. He said, the Bible says that the plans that I have for you, he said, no one can know it. No one can understand the plans that I have for you to prosper you and to do good to you. Like, but in that moment, just for that second, we're like, whoa, this moment of satisfaction is better than what God has planned for me. Don't accept the lie. And, you know, I love that, that he says that because, yeah, we're dramatic. I'm dramatic, man. And she tell me all the time. She's like, nah, you're so much. Like, we're dramatic people. And we feel like, man, I got to have it my way or it's the highway, Lord. It ain't working. You're not going to do it like I want to do it. You're not going to go my way. So forget you. Help us, Lord. Yeah. And Jacob made him swear. And he sweared and he sold his birthright to him. So we, we've looked at these different lies, and we, we looked out how they mixed the truth in with them and different things. Um, was he hungry? He probably was hungry. Do we get tired in this world? Absolutely. Yes. Do we struggle? Absolutely. We, men, I struggle. I don't know about you, but I struggle. I might be the worshiper or whatever you want to call me, <laughs> but listen, I struggle, Come on. okay? Come on. That's right. And, and it's when you become honest in your struggle then God can do something. Yes. Right. right? Right. It's when right. you become honest in your struggle that God's able to move. Yes. Yes. Instead of putting on a front that we are A-OK, -okay, no, Lord, I need you today. Yes. In this right. moment, right. right now, Lord, I need you. Yes. yes. Right. Amen. Right. So don't give in to the lie that you have to be strong, that you have to put on the front. Amen. And it even goes on even further. I'm just going to um, paraphrase it. I guess it goes on further. It starts to talk about how Jacob stole his blessing, stole Esau's blessing. Once again, striving in his own strength, trying to get blessings and everything. He dressed up. He, he dressed up like him. He, uh, the mom was in on it. And they both, they were scheming and plotting to get the blessing. Once again, I'm feeling bad for Esau. I'm like, man, why'd y'all take that man's blessing? You took his birthright, but now you took his blessing. But look, and even the, the Bible says, it said, uh, the Lord loved Jacob and he hated Esau. That's right. And I'm like, man, why'd you hate Esau, God? <laughs> he got the bad end of the <laughs> stick. But Esau chose it. That's right. He chose right. the things of the world. He chose it. And um, even so, he went and married the Canaanites. He went and married the women of the land that he wasn't supposed to. And Ange hit something on the head in the car. She said, but she said, Jacob was a hot mess. Why did he get all the blessings? It's not that we have it all together, right. but in our hearts, we choose Christ. Yes. Amen. Right? In our struggle. Amen. Right? It's not that we're walking perfect. Jacob didn't walk perfect. Man, that's he was right. manipulating, lying, and all kinds that's of things. Right. But that's the church. Hello, that's us. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm Jacob. <laughs> I want y'all to do it. Say, I'm Jacob. I'm Jacob. I'm Jacob, man. That's in the church. Yes. But in his heart, Jacob, even in his struggles, he was like, Lord, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Right. Lord, I, I need your help, Lord. And the thing that the Lord brought him to, Jacob to, was the reality of who he was. Right. He, he asked them. He went in the question that the Lord asked um, Adam and Eve. He asked them, where were you? But the question that the Lord asked Jacob, he said, who are you? What's your name? 
what's your name? Yeah, it was a deceiver. He was like, my name's Jacob. He was like, what's your name? But sometimes I feel like we go on, we put on this act, and we put on this, this cover-up, and we're trying to, you know, walk this thing out by ourselves. But it's like, no, Lord, I'm struggling. Lord, I'm Jacob here, and I need your help, Lord. And that was his heart. But Esau, he never came to a place of repentance. He never came to a place of repentance. Um, let's see, in Romans... Chapter 9. Actually, I'm not, I don't remember what it is, but it's in, it's in Hebrews. I'm sorry, it's in Hebrews. But it starts to talk about Jacob. I mean, it starts to talk about Esau and how Esau, they literally were talking about fornication. And, um, uh, but they, then they said Esau. Let me see if I can Hebrews find it. 12, 16. Hebrews 12, okay. Hebrews 12, 16. Hebrews 12, 16. Hebrews 12, 16 says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For so his birthright. And in verse 17, for you know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessings, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So there was a desire. He wanted the blessing, but he didn't want to come to a place of repentance. And sometimes in our life, it's like, if I want this blessing in my life, listen, I got I to gotta repent and turn away from some things yes. to receive the blessing that Amen. God has for me. Amen. And Jacob came to a place of saying, Lord, I am Jacob. I, I'm a deceiver, Lord. I'm struggling, Lord. I'm weak. This is who I am. And because he came to that place of repentance, he was able to receive his blessing. Yes. The Lord told him to go. Was, there, was he afraid? Yeah. He was so afraid. He thought Esau was going to come and kill him. Esau came with 400 men. And he was like, once again, he was scheming and plotting. He was like, I'm going to send this part of the family. And then I'm going to send this part of the family. And then if he kills them, then maybe we could get away and we could disappear. But God, once again, the Lord told him in the beginning, he said, the, the older shall serve the younger. So we have that truth tonight. We have that truth that God has already, he's already won the victory right. over all of our problems. He's already won the victory over our struggle. Amen. And he's your God tonight. Yes. And he said, I already won it. Go forth and get your blessing. Yes. But it was when they repented. It was when he repented. Yes. Esau chose not to repent. So I was like, man, why is Esau getting it so bad? Why is, why, poor Esau, you know, in my feelings, because I'm, I'm the first. And I'm like, <laughs> why? He didn't repent. He didn't repent. That's, that's pretty simple. That's pretty black and white. We don't repent. We can't go forth and get our blessing. He wanted it. He even cried about it. He cried about it. But, you know, sometimes we can shed tears. And I've done this. And, and Lord, forgive me. And I'll just be honest. I'll put myself out there. I've done this. I've shed tears about a sin, about a struggle, about something I'm struggling with. And then I shed my tears and I get up and I just I go back to it. Yeah. I can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in my heart, and I'll feel it, and I'll cry, and I'm like, oh, and I'll get up. and. Yeah. But if I don't repent and surrender that thing to him, man, and it was a wrestling that was going on with Jacob. There was a yeah. battle. There was a struggle. There was a war. But the Lord will change us in his yeah. presence. Yes. If you choose to go to him in his presence, man, he changes yes. you in his presence. Yeah. He makes you new. When you're in his presence, you'll never be the same again. Yes. Yes. Right. And he changed his name from Jacob and he changed it to Israel. Yes. yes. And he wants to change our circumstance, but also before he wants to change our, circ our circumstance, he wants to change our hearts. Yes. Yes. And to give someone a new name, it meant like a new character. It yes. meant like a new person. Praise God. When I became adopted, uh, I took on my parents' last name. I got a new name. I got a new birth certificate. Mm -hmm. I got a new uh, social security card, everything new. I was like a new person. Like, I mean, literally new. And when Christ, when you come into his presence with whatever circumstance that you're dealing with or struggling, 
He changes you in that moment. One moment, they said, in the presence of the master will change everything. One touch from the master will change everything. And like I said, when we first came in, into the, the house of God tonight, the Lord asked us some questions. He says, where are you and who are you? But I love that he comes and he meets you, he walks to you, Amen. and he says, come back. And I love that he wrestles with us. He doesn't leave us there. He's even willing to strive with us and fight with us Amen. to get us yeah. back on the Thank right path. Lord. He, even, he even fights with us. And I mean, man, that's compassionate. That's Amen. powerful. Amen. And I don't want you to go away from this word thinking like, oh, man, blah, blah, blah. You know, it shows us who we are, but then it shows us the character of God. And that's what I want you to focus on. The character of God. And you know what? It's okay to laugh at our craziness. You know, people are foolish. I mean, he calls us sheep. We are, brother, uh, Pastor Matt, he always says, I am dumb. Like, you know, I are dumb. That's what he says. It, and it's okay, right? That's how we came to him. Lord, I don't, I'm foolish, Lord. And I don't know half the time if I'm coming or going. And that's okay to be before the Lord broken and weak. If you just stand with me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm just going to. Hallelujah. Jesus. You know, the Lord put this song in my heart. Uh, and it's called Better is One Day. Yes. Better is one day in his courts than thousands elsewhere. That's right. Hallelujah. Better. Is one day in the presence of the Lord than anywhere else. And he can do more in a moment than anyone else can do in a lifetime. One moment in his presence. He can come in and change our appetite. I don't know what it is that you have on your plate tonight. I don't know what it is that you might be struggling with. But I know what I have on my own plate. I know what I'm struggling with. And I know that God is more than able. If I just come and I say, Lord, I'm over here. I'm lost in this moment. I'm lost in my struggle. But I hear you saying, where are you? I hear you saying, where are you tonight? Come to me. For I love you. Come to me. So if that's you tonight, if that's, if you're struggling with something, I just want you to come. I just want you to come and just let the Lord touch you because he's able to change you. He's able to give you a new name. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Here we are, Jesus. Lord, you're saying, where are you? Where are you? Come back to me. Where are you? Just come back to me and let me touch you tonight. Let me change your circumstance. Let me change your heart. If you find yourself, if you find yourself desiring something that might not be good for you, desiring.